ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we are going to use the awesome Finch robots. The first thing I want to do is teach you the things that a Finch robot can do. Uh, it has accelerometers, motors, a buzzer, a full color beak LED, which is what we're going to play with first. It has light, temperature, and obstacle sensors. It has a pen mount so we can draw back in the back, and it plugs into the USB. No batteries required. So, when you're looking at a Finch, and you'll get this later, uh, it has a LED in the front. It has obstacle sensors right through the middle. It has a temperature sensor right above it. It has light sensors that are the little dots uh, back towards the middle by the wings of what we'd call a Finch. And there's an accelerometer on the inside. I also need you to be super careful with the USB port. Uh, we need to make sure that there's always what I call a tail back there, and I'll show you that in the next video. And then when we plug it in and take it out of the computer, we need to make sure we always pull straight out. We don't wiggle to remove them. Friends, I want you to use the awesome Finch Connection app, but watch this. When you type Finch here at West Ottawa, it does not show up. So let me show you how to fix that. Uh, start a brand new window, and I want you to just type Finch Connection app in the search window. Google shows you that there is a Finch Connection app on the web store. Simply click that, and boom, you can add it to Chrome. It asks if you really want to add, add it to Chrome, and I'm telling you that yes, you do. And then it will actually show up on your Finch Connected apps. And you need that so you can go on to the next bit of trade. If for some reason you don't see the Finch Connection app immediately, uh, you can just start a brand new window. And when you hit HAPS, it'll eventually show up there. That's how you get the Finch Connection app. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Finch robot. And in a moment, you're going to go get yours. When you bring it to me, you need to show me that it has a straight up tail, which protects our USB cord. When it's time for you to quit today, uh, I want you to hold it like this. So you can see here I've got my hand around the back end. I just grip it. And I want you to hold and pinch that tail so that it's tall. I don't want that bent. And then just wind him up so that that tail stays like that. And you just wind it all the way up. That's how a Finch has to be returned. This tail helps protect the USB port. At this point, you may go grab your Finch, uh, come show me that the tail was good, and then at the end of the hour, understand that you're gonna grab it like I am, pinch the tail so that it stays those two pieces together, and it's nice and tall, and then wind it back up and put it on the shelf. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's your computer, and these are called the USB ports. This is the plug and notice this side there is a label and this side there's no label. I want you to make sure you're touching your computer and just slide that straight in. Never wiggle or jiggle, just slide it straight in with the label coming towards your screen. If you got it the other way, it doesn't work. Friends, it's time for the cool stuff. I need you to click your apps button and launch the Finch Connection app. When you open Scratch, this window pops up, and I need you to immediately go to Site Settings. We need to do two things. The first one I want you to do is allow pop-ups, because if you don't have these, you can't save, and you have to save in this program. It does not save automatically for us, and then we have to also allow Flash. Once you close that window, it says, hey, I need to reload. You tell it okie doke. When it pops up, then you can finally click the I understand and continue, and then the OK button. This gives us Scratch X, which lets us save to our computers, and the awesome extensions that run the Finch. Alrighty, so let's add our first piece of code. 
uh, find your events and do a when clicked. So that means when you click the flag or when you click this, things will happen. At that point, I want you to go down to our awesome more blocks and I want you to find the Finch LED color and I want you to drop it in. And there are letters R, G, and B. I would like you to take the letter R box and I'd like you to put in the number 255. Once you've done that, click the green flag and then take a look at your Finch and see if you can figure out what just occurred. If nothing changed, make sure that you left the Finch Connection app open, and if you cannot figure it out, you can call me over and I'll take a peek at it. Alright, I've got a little project for you right now. With these special LED colors, the largest number you can use is 255, and the smallest number is 0. So right now, I want you to change these to 0, and change the other one to 255, and then after you change it, click the arrow and note what happens. See if you can figure out what the R, the G, and the B stand for by using that technique. When you have a theory, come over to me and tell me what your theory for the letters is. Clicking the flag to change colors is neat, but it's way cooler when we can control it with the keys on the keyboard and they match. So what you do is bring out when the key is pressed and change it to the one you need. If you move to the bottom of the screen, it rotates through, and I want the R key to launch red. You can then simply duplicate that command, and you can put the green key on G. Just make sure that you change these to zeros so that it really does the color green when you press the different keys on the keyboard. Keep testing it and then build the following colors. I want you to make a blue key, so I'm going to just clue you in by making the B, and then you've got to find the code. And I would also like you to make a yellow key, so I'm going to put a Y there, but you still have to figure out the code. And then I also need you to make a purple key. And I need one other special key. When you duplicate, I want to make a stop all key on the letter S. And that way when we create cool random items, uh, we can use S to stop those. Simply click control, find the stop all, drop it under the S, delete the one that you made, delete the other when clicked because we don't need it anymore. You can even right click and clean up and it'll arrange all your parts nice and neat. Let's go back to events and bring out another when space pressed item and change it to a number one and let's make a cool rainbow command. Simply go to your more blocks, bring out one finch color and pick the first color you want to do. I'm going to do red, but then underneath it, Bring in a control and have it wait one second. Duplicate the purple piece, put it underneath, change the color, and all of a sudden you have made one command that when you press one, it does two colors. Your challenge is to add many, many colors and make it so that it does a rainbow and even cooler, see if you can figure out how to make it loop until you click the stop key and have it stop all the commands. All right, this one's super important. Uh, these do not save online, so we have to save ours physically. So I'd like you to hit File, Save Project. When this window, window pops up, you must hit Libraries and then Documents. This is your Documents area. In this area, I need you to click New Folder, and I need you to type Finch, and then I need you to double-click to go in Finch, and you need to put Project 1 LED, and hit Save. That way your work is saved for the next day. At the end of the day, when you quit, you must hit Save Project. You can click the same name, and it says, do you want to replace it, and you tell it yes. But I don't want you to lose your work, so make sure you've got that done.
All right, friends, I've got one other amazing piece of code I want you to do. Bring in another when a key is pressed, and let's use the letter I because I know I haven't used that before. We're going to use the control and bring in a sweet repeat, and we're going to let it repeat 10 times. Once again, we're going to go back to our LEDs, and we're going to bring that little critter in, which is wonderful. We've done this before, but now we're going to do something amazing with the operators. There's a sweet little guy called the random command, and let's put a random command in that goes from 1 to 255. Remember, that is the minimum color, or actually 0. Let's actually make that a 0. So it could be off or it could be max. And then we're going to put these random numbers in every box. Right click and duplicate your little command and drop it in. Right click and duplicate again and drop it in the last spot. So now when we press I, it'll hit uh, repeat, pick a color and show it again. The only thing we need to do is add a weight so that we can see it switch. So we've just learned two cool things. We've used our repeat and weight and we've learned how to pick random numbers so that it shows up different. You've done a fantastic job so far. Make sure you click File, Save Project so you don't lose it. Remember, we saved it as Project 1 LED. You can see I have many, many of these because I've been playing forever. If it asks you to replace your name, you can tell it yes. I just threw a letter after mine because I always like to have different copies. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed playing with the Finches, and make sure you come back for Lesson 2 at another day.